Hey there Heel Toe fans, Marcus from Heel Toe here and this video uh, is an install that I did on our second gen TLX Type S. I put on the carbon rear diffuser and the rear uh, side spoilers. Now I'm releasing this video in September 2023 but I actually recorded it back in August 2022. So, so there's some stuff in the video that may not seem in keeping with the timeline that if you've been following us you already know that we've put the ATLP exhaust into production and sold a bunch of them already this year and um, clearly we were already in Long Beach at the Grand Prix last year. So anyway uh, I hope that the timeline doesn't really mess you up too much. I did want to ask you a question though. In the first part of the video, I go over the factory instructions sort of like line by line and I wanted to make sure that uh, you guys thought that that was helpful. So if you'd rather me just skip to the DIY portions and go more step by step the way the instructions are, or if you think that reviewing the instruction sheet before getting started is helpful, uh, you know, I'll make sure that I try to incorporate that in any future installs that I do. I do have other TLX installs coming up, so you know, it might be helpful to, to add that or take it out if a, if a shorter video is better. So. Drop a comment, let me know if you think that that was helpful or not. Otherwise, uh, enjoy watching this video. I think it turned out relatively okay. I might have wanted to spruce it up with some music or something like that. But for the most part, I think we're getting the point across here that installing these items really, it's kind of like a uh, maybe a little bit time intensive to do, but it's not a difficult job and pretty much anybody can do it with a little bit of mechanical aptitude and a drill. All right, so enjoy this video and um, yeah let me know if you uh, have any opinions on that instructions on the intro hello YouTube it's Marcus from heel to automotive and I have to apologize for my voice I feel like crap today I got a cold or something but I am working on the TLX type S today I do not feel like doing that at all but I uh, definitely need to get this car worked on because we've got some rear under spoilers and the diffuser to put on so that I can bring this car to the Grand Prix of Long Beach where it's going to be featured in the Acura Car Corral next week. And I'm leaving on Thursday. Today is Saturday. It's not raining. It's a beautiful day to work on a car. So my health and desire to do this is way down. But hopefully it's still going to be a valuable video for you because we're going to pull the bumper off this TLX Type S and install these beautiful parts. All right, so here we have the rear under spoilers. These, oh, I got the wrong side. This is gonna go up into here and accent the rear of the car a little bit. And the carbon diffuser, these uh, part of the optional carbon suite for the TLX Type S, basically overlays the factory black. Now the black one is sort of an upgrade if you've got an A spec or whatnot, and then and then this would fit as well. But you know these carbon accents just really help step up the performance look of the car. I am going to ask you to sort of ignore the exhaust system here. This is our prototype ATLP exhaust. They are not done yet. It's just made out of you know scrap pieces and whatever, so it's a little ugly looking. I don't want you to judge the exhaust at all based on what you see in this video. But when we get the uh, rear accent pieces on, the whole thing is going to look a lot better and uh, yeah, hopefully present super well down in Long Beach. All right, so here we go. I've got the factory instructions all printed out. Those are going to be the perfect guide to get this done without any trouble at all. Come along and I'll show you step by step how this goes. All right, here they are, the factory instruction for the rear under spoiler and for the rear diffuser. They're both in the same general part of the car, so I'm fully expecting that the first few steps of this situation is going to be the same. Uh, the factory instructions are really nice because they go through and they tell you what required tools there are and uh, general safety and a parts list of what all you need. That way you make sure you have everything. Uh, everything comes with these... Uh, factory accessories except for instructions ironically so if you need instructions actually I'm going to uh, try to post those in the in the video description so that you can have them and you can see that the first uh, page is exactly identical we're going to pull out the rear carpet 
and they want us to take the spare out, and they want us to take out the battery cover, and they want us to take out the tool tray, which is fine. Disconnect the negative battery terminal. You know, between me and you, I don't always do that. But, you know, whatever. That's what the instructions say to do. So, you can do it if you want. Uh, here, they want you to mask off an area around the rear bumper. Same in both instructions. We've got a retaining tab here. Clip, 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 clip. Screw, screw, screw. Those are going to come out. Same again in both instructions. Uh, rear bumper coming off. All right. Oh, yeah. Retaining tabs, etc. So what you really want to watch out for here is the plug uh, that goes to the sensors and whatnot. You don't want to yank on that. So unplug that connector. And then, oh, here uh, Honda is usually pretty good about putting some marks behind the bumper where you're going to have to make some holes. Now this is the diffuser instruction. So some holes are going to go across here <coughs> that are going to be for these little uh, zip tie thingies to pop through and then clips go on the back side. And we have the same arrangement for the rear under spoiler along the side. There will be some scribe marks where we can um, you know, mask out and make a hole they always say uh, metric drill bits, but I don't know if I've ever had one of those. The thing is, is that these don't have to be exactly the right size. They're telling you to step from 3 to 6 to 8 to 10 to 12. But to be perfectly honest, this drill's super easy. You know, a smaller hole and then a bigger hole usually works great. Uh, so, we're going to find our holes, scribe marks, make some holes, and then clean the area very well uh, before installing and adhesing uh, the side under spoiler and of course the same thing here clean very well the bumper where you're going to have the adhesive strips from the new panels go on great it's super easy to do and then put these little uh, captive zip tie thingies on the little tails coming through the back side of the bumper that should be basically the same for both of these things Use the supplied hardware to install it. Zippy, zippy, tapey, tapey. This one you do both sides, of course. And then this side, just put the battery. So actually, it seems like all we really need to do is get the bumper off, find the little scribe marks, drill some holes. Of course, we're going to have to clean the bumper. Mine is really pretty nasty. So I'm going to hit that with some cleaning agent first and then pull this off and then... Uh, yeah, find those scribe marks and uh, make some holes and there you go. All right, corner clubbers. I said I was going to need to use some kind of a cleaning agent to, to get some of this grime off before I worked on the car. And this is what I'm going to use. This is the Adams uh, Car Care Waterless Wash and a microfiber towel. Um, the car is a little dirty even for this, but this stuff actually works really good for cleaning the car without like washing it. Like, it works really good if you go to a car show and you run through rain on the way there or something. You can use this to clean off the car. It's pretty mild and it, and it doesn't really hurt the surface at all. This probably isn't the best drag to use. Some of you car detail gurus are going to have a heart attack that I'm doing this. But you know what? It's going to get clean. Uh, I'll be able to install the lip spoilers on there and it'll look great. After, you know, regular waxing and whatnot, it's going to look amazing. So... Micro scratches, I'm sure it's going to happen, but you know what? An, a product like this really helps prevent it and gets you through a task like this without, you know, without having to wash the whole car, which I really don't have time to do right now. So I'm just going to saturate this really super good. You know, it says waterless wash. Of course, there's water in it. So, you know, it's not totally true, but you know, it just feels really smooth. It feels like it's, it's cleaning really well. It's like a a quick detailer, but a little bit more like to take the dirt off rather than to just dust it. You know, so much comes off and then you go with a little bit of a drying wipe and any road grime or anything that was on there has come off. And you got that beautiful tiger eye pearl finish underneath. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and do the diffuser area and, uh, and then the other side and then we'll be able to pull the bumper off. 
I'm just doing this on the car because it's a little bit easier to clean it while it's on the car. You may have a differing opinion about that, but I tell you what, when these bumpers come off, they're very floppy. So it can be hard to apply a little pressure and clean it when it's off the car. Um, you know, of course, use your lift if you have one. You don't have to get hyper detailed about clean, <coughs> cleaning this to begin with um, because you're going to go back with some alcohol pads to really clean the area where the adhesive is going to go. So we're mostly just getting the major dirt off so that we can go back later on and hit it with the alcohol to really make it a, a perfectly clean surface for the tape to stick to. So I'm totally going to cheat here because the only reason why you need to gut the trunk is to undo the battery and I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to screw with the radio code or anything. We're not really, the only electrical thing we're touching is these backup sensors and I just don't see the point. So I'm going to dip right into pulling off some of these fastener areas. So you're going to get behind this, this clip, oh, can't do this left handed, sorry YouTube. What is this little clip here? Sometimes what you can do is, I'm probably gonna have to pull this away anyway. Oh, come on, buddy. Frustration. It'll definitely come. We gotta get this clip off of here. Yeah. Yeah. Let's try. Uh, let's try this guy. Oh well, boom! Bob's your uncle. So there's a a bolt right there. There we go. It says that I got to grab those bolts, a few clips along the bottom, self-tapping screws up in here. Oh yeah, I can see them. Okay, so sometimes you have to pull the wheel off to get to these screws that are in here. Or if you have a stubby screwdriver, those help really good too. Although, I'm not able to find mine right now. So, oh wait, I put it over here on my new Omni wall. Yeah, stubby screwdriver will do the trick on that many times. Um, so you can get in there and unscrew. It's a little fiddly, so I'm not going to video it, but um, yeah, pull off these screws and the clips underneath per the instructions, and then the bumper is going to come off, right? Now, before you take the bumper off, think ahead, where am I going to put it once it's off? Because it's, you know, you don't necessarily want to just put it on the concrete. Um, I have this, uh, this cart set up already with a yoga mat. A yoga mat is a really good, helpful thing to have in your garage arsenal because they're soft, you can lay on them, bring it to the track. It's really good to put out if you're, if you're working on your car at the track uh, and you know, it won't scratch the bumper. Um, so you know, a towel or fender cover also works very well, but um, even if you're working on the ground, a yoga mat is pretty large and uh, I recommend that. So when the bumper comes off, it's gonna go over here. All right, this one might throw you for a loop because it's a little hidden. So there is a little bit of a secret screw. It's behind this little, I don't know, fender rug, I guess you could call it. You gotta get that screw out too. It's not hard to get to necessarily. You can get a little power screwdriver in here. Damn 285s. Oh, here we go. Just got to get the right angle. There we go. It's 
a long screw too. All right, now I think I can get the bumper off. All right, don't be afraid to tug on the bumper, but this is what you're gonna run into. These little hooks here grab on to these little holes to hold the bumper in place. Now it used to be that you could pop these out pretty easy on older cars, but on many of the newer Hondas I'm dealing with, they're very finicky. So if you pull too hard, you can break them like this. Now it'll still hold the bumper in place really good even if they get broken, so don't have a heart attack if you have a situation like this. But you do need to get in there and try to like pop that up over the hooks, right? So that, that, that's a pretty deep hook that grabs onto the bumper cover and it doesn't want to let go without a little help. And that's where the masking tape along here is really going to be like helpful to present, prevent scratches and stuff. I didn't do that probably because I'm just not thinking right right now. But anyhow, that's what you would normally do. Now we're just sort of holding on by a thread here. All right, the bumper is free, but before I go walking away, undo the clip. Yeah, I got the harness disconnected from the frame, and then you can undo the, the harness from the bumper. All right, bumper off and free. So I'm gonna rest it up on my cart right here. Cool. And now we can get to work on the bumper. It's a little breezy, so I don't want to leave it too uh, unattended. But next step's coming. All right, here we are with the bumper. And I've used my saturated waterless wash towel to strategically wipe away the areas that are marked for screw holes to go. Actually, they're not screw holes. They're through holes so that those zip ties can run through. And you can see that they are pretty well identified in the plastic here. Now you don't need to clean the whole thing. Just clean the areas where they're at so you can see them really well. There's one here and then one here and a couple of more, right? And then of course along the side too, one, two, three. You can use um, what I like to call your E and B tool, your eyes and your brain, to see where those locations are at here and then just sort of see where the holes are gonna be up in here. Now, it, it also kind of shows you the diameter that the hole needs to be. So just get drill bits that sort of match the small hole and then the big hole and drill away. And uh, once those holes are in place, then we can uh, start attaching the stuff. So it's really super convenient that you don't need a template or anything. You just follow these holes that are here. Thank you, Honda. Typical Northwest fashion, Elise has started washing her car and the rain is coming. So she kind of cursed my project here by starting to wash the car. <laughs> it's okay. It's blue over there and blue all around. So this is temporary. All right, I got the holes drilled in place. So that means that the next thing I can do is uh, mock up the panels. What should I do first? Diffuser, uh, you're just, to get this mocked up, you just basically line up the little zip tie tabbies here, feed them through. And then you wanna make sure that you've got these little pigtails for the 3M tape hanging out, right? Because you're gonna go back, and once you get it all firmly put in place, peel those away to uh, reveal the adhesive behind there and then it'll stick together. So I'm gonna go ahead and mock up all of these things because I need both hands and then, uh, and then show you what's next. Okay, with it mocked up in place, you can then use the supplied alcohol wipes 
to uh, kind of sneak underneath there. You can see exactly where the adhesive is going to want to stick. So you can get in there and um, wipe down those areas so that when you reveal the adhesive, it sticks really super good. You really got to do that. You can also do this alcohol step before you put the thing in place, which maybe I should have done that, but this works too. To be perfectly honest, the hardware holds these things in place so good you don't even really need the adhesive, but for a good long permanent factory install, it really does seal the deal. All right, with the alcohol applied, I then like to take some of the clips, get them started so you can kind of like slowly start cinching the thing down into place. I'm not pushing them down all the way, just putting them in place to hold it. The main goal here is to keep the panel in place and then I like to pull the adhesive strips out once the whole thing gets back on the car because when it's on the car it'll take its final shape and then the tape will really be in the proper spot when you pull these little strips out it'll stick in exactly the right spot. So just get them started for now. You can get them almost all the way tight but I like to leave you know maybe a little bit of play there just in case. So now it's in place enough to where my little tape tails aren't going to fall back in. Go ahead and do the side pieces. With all the holes drilled, got the diffuser mocked up, it's time to do the side under spoilers, right? So now these are a little different. They don't have fancy little pigtails hanging off of the uh, double-sided adhesive. So we'll have to use um, we'll have to use a little technique of just peeling it back and folding it to do that. Um, before I do that though, I'm going to use the alcohol swab to clean the bumper just because it's exposed now and um, that way we can get a good stiction to it. There you go. Just wipe the area where you think the adhesive is going to want to stick to. That's all you need to do here. And these little clips, they have a flat side and a side with a barb on it. The flat side is going to go against the inside of the bumper and then a couple of screws that go into these brackets. So you got a total of five holes in the side of the rear under spoiler and that's what's going to attach all this together. But first, we peel back the adhesive. Peel it back a little bit and just sort of fold it so that it's exposed on the outside like this. All right, the bumper's back in place and now we get to do the fun part, which is just sort of like satisfyingly peeling away the adhesive backing from our tapes and then giving it a final push against the body of the car. This tape uh, really activates with pressure, so it's good to have some, some pressure on there to really get it to bond and that's going to make a really nice permanent um, adhesion. Nice. Don't mind this little plug. It's active exhaust experimentation going on before your very eyes. Pull this away. Nice. Nice. 
Nice. And it's perfectly in the exact right place that it needs to be on the car. Stuck there, alcohol cleaned. It will stick and not want to come off. All right, there you have it. Diffuser installed, side under spoilers installed. And the worst part about it was releasing these clips right here. A little bit of a tool in there. Plastic is probably better, don't scratch the paint. Uh, but that's really the worst part of the whole thing. And then, you know, really handling such a large bumper, it is uh, a bit of a hand. So the yoga mat, I think, is a really great tip. Um, it's really super simple to do. Uh, if you have apprehension about drilling holes, um, it's a piece of cake. They mark them for you, and they even give you the size that it's supposed to go to. They couldn't make it any easier. If you've got apprehension about any of this job, well, then have somebody else do it. But if you're a little bit adventurous, feel free to tackle it. Uh, maybe if you've done the side skirts and found out that those were pretty simple, this is probably just one level up from that. Uh, I hope you didn't mind my poor feeling here, my, my poor voice, and you know, I don't know, I'm feeling a little bit run down. So, you know, if I can do it while I'm sick, you can totally do it in good health. All right, thank you very much for watching this video and make sure that you like this video if you do like it because uh, it really helps our algorithm grow the channel, all of that. And when we post more TLX Type S videos, you can subscribe and they'll make sure that they show up in your feed. Um, uh, the TLX Type S is just starting the adventure for us now. Obviously, we've got this exhaust system that we're gonna be working on even more. Much more to come. Uh, really enjoyed having you and we'll see you next time. Heel Toe is in your corner.